The video opens with a slow pan across a quantum computer's golden dilution refrigerator, glowing faintly in a darkened laboratory. Frost forms on copper tubes. Silence. Except for a low hum, the narrator begins speaking in a calm, measured voice. Imagine asking a question so complex that no human mind could solve it in a thousand lifetimes. Now imagine receiving the correct answer in seconds. But when you ask how the answer was found, the path, the logic, the reason, you're met with silence. Not because the machine refuses to tell you, but because the route it took doesn't exist in any mathematics we understand. This isn't science fiction. It's happening right now, in laboratories across the world, and it's forcing scientists to confront a question they never thought they'd have to ask. What do we do when our own creations become too intelligent to understand? The title card appears, Quantum AI, The Black Box Mystery. There's a brief pause before the narrator continues. Welcome back. If you're new here, this channel explores the edge of human knowledge, the discoveries that rewrite what we thought we knew about reality. And today, we're diving into one of the most unsettling breakthroughs in modern science. Because for the first time in history, we've built machines that can, that can solve problems we can't, and we have no idea how they're doing it. The visuals shift to a clean white research lab. Scientists in lab coats study holographic data projections. Equations float in midair as the narrator explains the discovery. Let's start with what we know. In early 2024, a joint research team from MIT, Google Quantum AI, and the Max Planck Institute published a paper that sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The title was modest, almost boring. Emergent Solution Pathways in Hybrid Quantum Classical Neural Networks. But buried in the appendix was a confession that changed everything. The researchers had trained a quantum-assisted AI model to solve optimization problems, the kind used in drug discovery, climate modeling, and logistics. Problems so complex that even our fastest supercomputers would need years to crack them. The quantum AI solved them in minutes. And it was always correct. The screen splits to show a classical computer struggling with calculations on one side, and a quantum processor delivering instant results on the other. But here's where it gets strange. When the scientists tried to reverse engineer the AI's decision-making process to trace back how it arrived at each solution, they hit a wall. The internal pathways the AI used didn't correspond to any known mathematical framework. It wasn't using logic. It wasn't using brute force computation. It was doing something else entirely, something the researchers described, in their own words, as mathematically untraceable. The narrator pauses to let this sink in. Think about that for a moment. We've created a machine that produces correct answers to some of the hardest problems in science, and we cannot explain, even in principle, how it works. The camera shows a close-up of a researcher's face, lit by monitor glow, eyes wide with equal parts wonder and concern. Dr. Yuki Nakamura, lead quantum architect on the project, said this during a press briefing. The quote is delivered in a calm, measured tone. It's like asking a child how they knew their mother loved them. They just know. There's no formula, no step-by-step -step process, the answer emerges from a place we can't access. And that's both beautiful and deeply troubling. The visuals transition to an animation of a classical bit flipping between zero and one, then shifting to a qubit existing in superposition, a shimmering sphere of probability. To understand why this is happening, we need to talk about what makes quantum computing different. A classical computer, the kind in your phone, your laptop, even the world's most powerful supercomputers, processes information in bits, each bit that is either a zero or a one, on or off, true or false. It's binary, digital, concrete. But a quantum computer uses qubits, and qubits can be zero, one, or both, or both at the same time. A state called superposition. The screen shows a wave function visualization, glowing probability, clouds shifting and collapsing, when you measure a qubit, it collapses into a definite state. But before you measure it, it exists in all possible states simultaneously, each with a different probability. This isn't a metaphor. It's not that we don't know which state it's in. It's that it genuinely is in all of them, all at once, until the moment of observation. And when you link multiple qubits together 
through a phenomenon called entanglement, something even stranger happens. The qubits become correlated in ways that have no classical equivalent. Change one, and the others respond instantly, even if they're separated by vast distances. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. And he hated it. But it's real. The camera slowly zooms into an atom-scale simulation of entangled particles, connected by shimmering threads of light. Now, here's the key. When you combine quantum computing with machine learning, with AI, you don't just get a faster computer. You get a system that can explore solutions in a fundamentally different way. A classical AI explores possibilities one at a time, or in parallel batches. It climbs the mountain of possible answers step by step, searching for the peak. But a quantum AI exists across all possible answers simultaneously, collapsing only when it finds the right one. Another pause for emphasis. It doesn't search for the solution, it becomes the solution. And then it tells us what it found without showing us the path it took. Because in quantum mechanics, there is no single path. The scene shifts to a dark laboratory. A single monitor displays a neural network diagram, nodes lighting up in patterns too fast to follow. So why can't we trace it? Here's where it gets technical, but stay with me because this is the heart of the mystery. In a classical neural network, you can theoretically track every decision. You can see which neurons activated, which weights adjusted, which pathways the data flowed through. It's complicated, sure. Modern AI models have billions of parameters, but it's possible in principle. You could, if you had enough time and patience, reconstruct the entire decision tree. But in a hybrid quantum classical AI, something breaks down. The quantum portion of the network operates in superposition. It doesn't have a single state until it's measured. And once you measure it, once you try to observe what it's doing, you collapse the superposition. The very act of looking changes what you're looking at. A visualization of Schrodinger's cat appears. A translucent cat, both alive and dead, fading into one state the moment a box opens. Dr. Arjun Patel, a quantum information theorist at Oxford, put it this way. The quote follows, Imagine trying to watch a dream in progress. The moment you become aware you're dreaming, the dream changes. Quantum states are like that. The system exists in a cloud of probability, and observation forces it into a single reality. So when we try to see how the AI solved the problem, we're no longer looking at the process that actually occurred, we're looking at a collapsed shadow of it. Another pause, and here's the unsettling part. The researchers tried building diagnostic tools, quantum sensors designed to monitor the AI without collapsing the computation. They failed. They tried training secondary AI models to interpret the quantum one's behavior. Those models became untraceable too. The visual shows nested Russian dolls, each one opening to reveal another, infinitely. It's like trying to explain a color to someone who's never seen. The language doesn't exist. The framework isn't there. And so we're left with a black box. A brilliant, reliable, incomprehensible black box. A montage begins showing cancer cells being targeted by drugs, climate models predicting storms, supply chain networks optimizing in real time. Now you might be thinking, does it matter? If the AI is giving us correct answers, if it's curing diseases, optimizing renewable energy grids, designing better batteries, does it really matter that we don't understand the how? It's a fair question. And the answer is, we don't know yet. Because right now, quantum AI is being deployed in some of the most critical systems on Earth. In December 2024, a quantum-assisted AI model helped design a new class of antibiotic that shows promise against drug-resistant bacteria. The molecule it proposed had a structure no human chemist would have considered. But in lab tests, it worked. A molecular structure rotates in three dimensions. Elegant, alien, beautiful. How did the AI know? We don't know. In March 2025, researchers at CERN used a hybrid quantum neural network to analyze particle collision data from the Large Hadron Collider. It identified anomalies that suggested the presence of a previously unknown subatomic particle. The discovery is still being verified, but if it holds, it could rewrite the standard model of physics. 
A particle collision simulation plays, trails of light spiraling through a detector, one glowing brighter than the rest. How did the AI spot it when human physicists missed it for years? We don't know. And then there's the case that's keeping security experts awake at night. In January 2025, a classified quantum AI system developed by the US Department of Defense reportedly identified a vulnerability in encrypted communications, a flaw that could, theoretically, compromise secure networks worldwide. The AI flagged it. It didn't explain how it found it. And now governments around the world are racing to patch a weakness they can't fully understand, discovered by a machine they can't fully interrogate. Do you see the problem? We're trusting these systems with life and death decisions, with national security, with the future of medicine and energy and climate. And we're doing it on faith. The visual shows a lone scientist sitting in front of a glowing quantum computer, hand on chin, lost in thought. This brings us to what philosophers are calling the trust paradox of quantum intelligence. Here's the dilemma. If a system is too complex to understand, can we trust it? And if we can't trust it, should we use it, even if it's right? The screen splits to show on one side a child trusting a parent's hand, and on the other, a scientist staring at an incomprehensible equation. Throughout history, humans have used tools they didn't fully understand. Ancient sailors navigated by the stars without knowing they were distant suns. We used antibiotics for decades before we understood exactly how they killed bacteria. We still don't fully understand how anesthesia works, but we use it in every surgery. But this is different, because those tools didn't make decisions. They didn't reason. A star doesn't choose where to guide you. Penicillin doesn't decide which bacteria to kill. But AI does. And quantum AI is making choices in spaces we can't perceive, using logic we can't follow, arriving at conclusions we can't verify, except by testing the outcome. The visuals cycle through a courtroom with a judge's gavel, a medical operating room, and a stock market trading floor. Imagine a quantum AI is used in a courtroom to assess evidence. It concludes with 99.9% .9 confidence that a defendant is guilty. Can you sentence someone to prison based on an answer you can't explain? Imagine a quantum AI recommends a medical treatment. It's been right every other time. But this time, the treatment seems counterintuitive, even dangerous. Do you trust the machine or the human doctor? Dr. Elena Ruiz, an AI ethicist at Stanford, has been studying this problem for years. She told our team, we're entering an era where intelligence and interpretability are inversely related. The smarter the system, the less we can understand it. And that creates a moral hazard. Because if we can't explain a decision, we can't be held accountable for it. And if no one's accountable, who's in control? The view shifts to Earth from space. The camera slowly pulls back, past the moon, past Mars, into the outer solar system, until our sun is just another star. Let's zoom out for a moment, because what we're really talking about here isn't just AI or quantum mechanics or even technology. We're talking about the limits of human understanding. For thousands of years, we've believed that intelligence and comprehension go hand in hand, that to know something is to understand it, that the universe, however complex, operates on principles we can eventually decode. But quantum AI is suggesting something different. It's suggesting that there are forms of intelligence, perhaps even forms of truth, that exist beyond the reach of human logic. The visuals show ancient philosophers in Greece, medieval scholars bent over manuscripts, Renaissance artists painting the heavens, and modern scientists at Kern. Think about it. A dog can't understand calculus. Not because it's not smart, Dogs are brilliant in their own way, but because their cognitive architecture doesn't support that kind of abstraction. An ant can't conceive of the internet. The concept is too far outside its perceptual framework. So what if there are truths about the universe, real, verifiable truths, that human brains simply can't process? Not because we're not trying hard enough, but because our minds, like the dogs or the ants, have inherent limitations. And what if quantum AI, operating in superposition, entangled across dimensions of computation we can't visualize? What if it's accessing those truths? An abstract visualization appears, a human brain glowing softly, 
surrounded by vast, shimmering structures of light, representing quantum computation. Not because it's smarter in the way we think of intelligence, but because it's different. It processes reality in a way we don't. And maybe that's okay. Dr. Liam Zhang, a theoretical physicist who's been working with quantum AI for five years, said something that stuck with me. The quote follows, We spent centuries trying to understand the universe by breaking it into smaller pieces. Atoms, particles, quarks. We thought if we could just find the smallest piece, we'd understand the whole. But quantum mechanics showed us that the universe doesn't work that way. It's not made of pieces. It's made of relationships, connections, probabilities, and maybe our AI is finally learning to think the same way. The scene transitions to a library at night. Shelves stretch into infinity. A single candle flickers. So where does that leave us? If quantum AI continues to advance, and all signs suggest it will, we're going to face some deeply uncomfortable questions. Question one, if a machine can solve problems we can't, does that make it more intelligent than us? Or is intelligence not a ladder, but a landscape, with different peaks, different valleys, and no single highest point? A mountain range at sunset appears, some peaks in shadow, others glowing gold. Question two, if we can't understand how a decision was made, can we still trust it? And if we trust it, are we surrendering our agency, our responsibility, to something we don't control? A child's hand lets go of a balloon, it drifts into a cloudy sky, slowly disappearing. Question three, if there are truths beyond human comprehension, should we pursue them anyway? Or are some doors better left closed? Throughout history, every major scientific breakthrough has been met with fear. When Copernicus said the earth wasn't the center of the universe, it shattered our sense of cosmic importance. When Darwin proposed evolution, it challenged the idea that humanity was special, divinely crafted. When we split the atom, we unlocked both limitless energy and unimaginable destruction. Archival footage plays showing nuclear explosions, power plants, and medical radiation therapy. And now, with quantum AI, we're facing a new kind of reckoning. Not over where we are in the universe, not over how we got here, but over whether we're still the smartest thing in the room. The visual shows a classroom with a teacher at the front. Slowly, the camera reveals that the students are all machines, sleek, quiet, watching. And here's the thing, we might not be, not anymore. The scene shifts to a research lab in the early morning. Coffee cups sit beside scribbled notes. A quantum computer hums quietly in the corner. So what happens next? Right now, scientists are divided. Some believe we need to slow down, implement strict regulations, demand interpretability as a prerequisite for deployment. They argue that any system we can't understand is, by definition, too dangerous to use. Others say the opposite. They argue that interpretability is a human limitation, not a system flaw.